They ruled Earth for nearly 200 million years but in the end, the poor old dinosaurs didn't stand a chance. Key Points Three quarters of plant and animal species were wiped out in a mass extinction 66 million years ago whether a meteorite collision triggered vast volcanic eruptions in what is now India is debate two different high precision dating techniques broadly agree that volcanism was underway before the collision but differ on other points some 66 million years ago a meteorite 10 to 80 kilometers wide likely an asteroid struck the planet creating the Chicxulub crater under Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula even before the collision, vast floods of lava were already smothering what is now central western India, according to two papers published in Science Today. Whether the extraterrestrial wallop made these volcanic eruptions worse is still up for debate. According to one study, led by University of Liverpool's Courtney Sprain, the collision triggered super-earthquakes that ramped up that volcanic activity, with three-quarters of the lava flowing forth post-crash. But the other, by Princeton University's Blair Shine and colleagues, claims the lava gushed in pulses, which started independently well before the impact. Dr. Sprain said the story of what finished off three quarters of plant and animal species, including the non avian dinosaurs, at the end of the Cretaceous period can help us understand changes happening to modern ecosystems. We're now starting to understand more mechanistically what happened and what can lead to these large-scale ecosystem collapse events, she said. Layers of volcanic rocks are clearly seen in the Western Ghats landscape. Nutting out exactly how much the deck and trip lava flows and the asteroid each contributed to the mass extinction has been hard to do, in part because precisely dating when the lava flowed is tricky. But that's what the two new studies set out to do using different techniques. While Dr. Sprain and her team used a technique that measured different forms of argon in a mineral called plagioclase taken directly from the lava layers, Dr. Shine's crew examined the ratio of uranium and lead in zircon sandwiched between the flows. Both dating techniques work on the same principle, that given a certain amount of time, chemical elements decay into new elements, but each has its pros and cons. Scientists use clink versus clunk camera method, parts of the deck and traps had been dated before, but argon, argon dating can be inaccurate as minerals tend to weather quickly in the tropical environment. To get around this, Dr. Sprain and her colleagues decided to concentrate on one mineral, plagioclase, which is commonly found in basalt. It also retains its crystal structure, even when other minerals don't. So how do you find plagioclase crystals in these massive, ancient lava flows? It's very technical, Dr. Sprain joked. We hit the rock with a hammer, and if it made a clunk, we didn't sample it. It made it clink, we sampled it. Clinking means that some of those mineral structures are still intact, whereas the clunk indicates that they've altered to clay, they calculated that. Lava flows increased dramatically almost 600,000 years after the collision, with 75% of the deck and traps volume erupting post-impact. But this finding raises a slew of new questions. Previous studies showed that in the millions of years before the mass extinction, climate change, attributed to carbon and sulfur volcanic gas emissions, was already decimating ecosystems. The hypothesis before had been that 80% of the volume erupted before the mass extinction, Dr. Sprain said. The main question for Dr. Sprain was, if the Deccan lava flow wasn't driving that climate change before the mass extinction, where was the gas being released? Was gas being released passively through fractures before the collision, she asked, or was there another? source of gas from the volcanic system that we're not even thinking about, uranium lead dating tells another story. DR Shine's crew analyzed layers around the flood lava layers using uranium lead dating, one of the oldest and most precise dating techniques. It exploits the fact that when zircon forms, it traps uranium in its crystal structure, but not lead, so any lead in zircon must be produced by the radioactive decay of uranium. But even though zircon is commonly found in some volcanic ash and rocks, like granite, it's rarely in basalt, which is what lava flows are made of. 
so directly dating these flows using uranium lead is pretty much impossible. There's also the issue that zircon can form a long time before it's spat out of the crust, said Jacqueline Halpin, a geologist at the University of Tasmania who wasn't involved in either study. The zircon might grow early in a magma chamber, hang around for tens to thousands of years, then be picked up and erupted out later, Dr. Halpin said. So with a bit of mathematical modeling to take that growth phase into account, Dr. Cheyenne's team found four pulses of volcanic activity, each lasting around 100,000 years. Importantly, they found these high-volume gushes started tens of thousands of years before the meteorite collision. Teasing out the carbon question with teams plan to keep drilling into the Deccan Traps timeline and explore the drivers of climate change at the time of the mass extinction. People think volcanoes cause mass extinctions by putting carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, Dr. Shine said, but we still have a pretty poor understanding of how much carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide were in these magmas. It's a difficult problem because you're inherently trying to infer something about the amount of something that's not there anymore. Some geologists think that ancient magma didn't contain enough carbon to wreak as much climate havoc as it did. But, he said, it could be possible magma beneath the crust forced its way upwards without breaking the surface, and heated carbon-rich sediments to the point where they released greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. What sounded the death knell for dinosaurs? Curtin University geochronologist Fred Jordan found Dr. Cheyenne's conclusions, that huge eruptions kicked off well before the meteorite impact, were, more logical, from a climate change perspective. Even though humans are responsible for the sixth mass extinction, others have been accompanied by volcanism, Professor Jordan said. For instance, the Great Dying, which marked the end of the Permian period and wiped out nearly all life on Earth, is thought to have been triggered by massive swaths of lava known as the Siberian Traps in Russia. The Deccan Traps is the purple spot covering 500,000 square kilometers of India, but there are other areas where flood volcanism has taken place. These large igneous provinces produce lots of gas in a short amount of time, and that's where the problems start, Professor Jordan said. The atmosphere can't keep up, if the asteroid missed Earth 66 million years ago, could volcanism alone have triggered the mass extinction event? It's likely, Professor Jordan said, whatever the volcanism started, the impact finished the business.